Linda McDonald. Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. Okay, let's get into this crazy juicy story that involves Olivia Wilde, Harry Styles, Jason Sudeikis, a disgruntled nanny who's spilling the beans to Daily Mail, and a delicious salad dressing. Let's get into it. As we know, Olivia Wilde, the director and actress of Don't Worry About It, Darling, and Jason Sudeikis from Ted Lasso and formerly SNL, formerly SNL, they share two kids. They were never married. They were living as a family. Now, she started to direct Harry Styles in the movie Don't Worry, Darling. And then later on, it was revealed that they were a cup that they were a couple. She has always said that there was no affair happening while she was with Jason. That she left Jason, that they she started working on the movie, then she left Jason, and then only after she was a, a separated from Jason and a single woman did she and Harry Styles, who's 10 years her junior, she was 38, he was 28, start to have their love affair. I don't think anyone believed this, but I guess the nanny is proving that that, of, true, of course, was not true. So according to this nanny, which I don't know how she didn't sign an NDA, but she's now done a a two-parter with Daily Mail. So information as I'm doing this is coming, more and more is coming out. But I think we can all agree she was a pretty shitty nanny, and this pretty much sucks because she's revealing everything from fights that they had. And so let's, let me just start from the beginning. So the nanny's saying that um, she went to go work on the movie Jason had no idea that they were in any kind of um, relationship problems at all. And that, in fact, at that time, according to the nanny, they were talking about actually getting married and making it official and for their younger daughter to be a flower girl and all of this. She gets the movie. She goes off to start to film the movie. According to the nanny, she starts living at a hotel near set and not coming home because she tells Jason there was a COVID situation, so I have to stay at this hotel. Jason thinks everything's fine. And then he's like, oh my God, she came home and like basically just left me, is, is leaving me. And he was so distraught that he like ran out to try to stop her and he laid his body in front of her car and um, so that she wouldn't leave. And it was dramatic and they had a light, you know, fight and everything. And the nanny's watching it all. And he's, you know, has these text messages to the nanny where he's so confused. And he writes the nanny, she left me and she took the salad and a salad dressing that she normally makes for our family. And she's taking her famous salad dressing to bring it to Harry. And that is what is just kind of crazy. So. Someone found the salad dressing. In some interview that she did once, she said, oh, I make this salad dressing from um, the book that Nora Ephron wrote about, um, who's the famous woman that's a chef? Anyway, let me tell you what it is. It's just Dijon mustard and expensive red, um, uh, red vinegar and olive oil whisked up. Like you whisk it up really fast. And anyway, her little kids love this salad dressing. Um, Jason loved it. And it just really was like her signature thing was this salad dressing. And the fact that she left with the salad and the salad dressing kind of makes a sad thing sort of funny. But the whole thing is that this nanny is just going off to talk about it. So now the two of them... um, who are now co-parenting. Now, let's just talk about some other drama that's gone on with Olivia Wilde and this situation. She got in a lot of trouble recently proving that she wasn't telling the truth about Shia LaBeouf. Remember Shia Shia LaBeouf? I'm just going to call him Shia. Can I just do Shia? Okay, Shia. He's had issues, right? I've talked about this in the show before. So Harry Styles replaced Shia. But before she got Harry, she really wanted Shia for the part. And Shia wasn't feeling it, and he pulled out of it. She believed that maybe the female co-star, Florence Pugh, had something to do with Shia leaving. But the narrative she told later was once Shia got bad, you know, bad publicity, it kind of came out that he was wasn't behaving right with women in public and on films. She was like, I stand up for women and I got rid of Shia 
and hired Harry Styles because we didn't want this problematic person on set. That was sort of the story she put out. Shia then said, she's lying. Here is a a, um, a video of her talking to me saying, please consider doing this movie. Please, I think this is going to work. And this might be showing Miss Florence Pugh that, you know, this is a little lesson to her that she can't have it her way. Well, that's very different than what she said. So she just is like pushed that off the rug. Not true, not true. Now there's others. Now it's kind of appearing that she was unfaithful and lying about this. So then Harry starts working on the movie. She's staying at the hotel saying that there's a COVID situation, which the nanny is, I think, alluding that may have not have been true. So he's just completely blindsided Jason when she leaves and leaves with the salad dressing. And um, and then she also reveals the nanny that they were sleeping together, like after the production started with Harry. So could she have maybe been sleeping with both of them at the same time? It's all really the most disturbing thing about it is that you hired this woman um, and she's saying all this stuff. And then she goes, and then they fired me. And I've been a nanny my whole life. And I had to, I had no place to go. So they put me up at some beautiful, like Four Seasons Hotel for months and picked up the bill. Jason and Olivia did. So it's, she acts like she, the way she starts to say the story is like, this was my whole career being a nanny. They fired me abruptly. I had no place to go. Um, doesn't sound like that to me. And so now they have come together and said, we just want to put this behind us, put this awful woman, nanny fucking from hell behind us. Uh, we have joined forces in the fact that we both probably hate her and feel really gross that she was in our home and revealing fights and intimate moments between us and things that happen in a family, whether you're getting divorced or perfectly happy or not. People aren't always speaking to each other beautifully. And you think that nanny's watching your kid is fucking taking notes to go to the Daily Mail. Like, sh- <laughs> it's awful. It's like awful. Like, are you kidding me? You know, it's, it's, you know, hey, don't be jealous of the rich that can have nanny and staff around. When you hear this, you're like, Jesus, maybe it is nice that it's just us in our walls and nobody watching. Um, but, you know, they've had their issues. He claims that when um, Olivia Wilde was served with, with papers about their um, child custody situation while she was on stage doing a speech or doing a panel, he's like, oh, my God, I had no idea she was going to be served that way. I just didn't want her to be served at Harry's house or when my kids were around. And But I did not know that the process, process server would serve her at that you know moment in a public moment. I didn't want that. So there's, their whole situation has been very public, very weird and ugly. Then we all saw that, God, is Harry as into her as before at can? I mean, it's a big, juicy mess. And um, there definitely was weird body language at the film festivals and stuff. I saw the movie. I guess I can talk about it now because if you didn't see it, I feel like I'm not spoiling it. Can we talk about it, Annie? Can I just spoil it? Okay. So I went to go see the movie. You know how excited I was to see this freaking movie, okay, which was about, um, you know, I thought, oh, my God, this is 1960s decor. Men are in suits. They're all wearing beautiful colored, uh, you know, they're in Palm Springs with different colored doors and they're beautiful, you know, postmodern, like, decor of their homes. And what is this juicy story about? And... I guess I never, I guess we never revealed what it was about. So it was very, I didn't love it all the way through. I did go to a fancy movie theater and I probably had one too many glasses of wine. So I, maybe I should watch it over again. But then Annie saw it and she cleared up some things for me. And basically (laughs) there's like a weird secret at the end, you know, like an M. Night Shyamala kind of a weird secret at the end. And the secret pissed me off because it turned out this wasn't even real life. They were in like a vert, like, what do you call those things where you, you put virtual the, reality. a virtual reality where you have the white things and you're, you see people like punching stuff in the air. I guess in this world, her, um, Harry, who looks like this, I've got the YouTube on here. This is him eating a salad, probably on set because 
in the world of the night. So basically what it is, is he was like a loser, okay, in real in the real world. He was a loser in the real world. And the character of Florence was a successful doctor. So she was coming home after like 36 hour shifts and he had like greasy hair on his zitty face. And he was like listening to podcasts all day. Seriously, that's what it was. And playing video games. <laughs> So somehow he subscribed to some group, some real special Patreon that taught him how to tie his girlfriend up and like put these things on her eyes and put drops in her eyes so she wouldn't go blind and like open up her mouth so she so she could eat a little or, or maybe just be not dehydrated. And then all day long, they would have the ability to go play in this virtual world. And so... Her character doesn't know that she's a doctor. She thinks she's living in the 1960s. She thinks that her boyfriend, Harry Styles, is like some cute 1960s executive where all she has to do is drink martinis and like make a casserole all day. But then she starts getting like these weird flashbacks and these weird things. And you're watching it go going, what the hell is this? This is like a Rosemary's Baby kind of thing. Like what's happening? And then in the end... I still don't even know really what happens in the end, but that is the secret. The secret is that she was a successful doctor and he was like a loser gamer and subscribed to this special Patreon that said, we can, you can go to this virtual world all day and have a beautiful life and you won't have a zitty face and you'll have a better head of hair and your wife will be totally hot and, and like want to fuck you because you'll actually be doing something with your day. And we're going to go back 50 years to the 1960s and like have some fun. But it was like the secret came so late in the movie that I didn't enjoy it as much. I would have said reveal the secret earlier and have her somehow figure it out earlier and then wonder what to do or something because the idea of it was cool. But it just came too late in it. And um, oh, and then there was this one cool part where the part of Olivia Wilde, she was in it playing a part. And they're like in the virtual world. And they now they both know they're in the virtual world. And she goes, come, come back, come out to the real world with me. And the girl, the other Olivia Wilde lady is like, I don't want to go there because here my children are alive. So it's like, People went to this different virtual world for whatever reason. Like this character may have lost her children. And she's like, I just want to go to a place where I can just re, you know, live this moment. And they're like, okay, there's this weird 1960s world you can go into. So anyway, speaking of another movie I saw on the plane was Elvis. And I really liked it. I know it was really long, but I got to sleep in the middle. And I loved the beginning. And I loved the end. And I loved the music. And Tom Hanks completely transformed himself as this mean guy that like took all his money and I loved seeing that he was in Vegas since I'm going to Vegas this weekend um I hope you're coming to see me at the Venetian but so who knows if they're going to stick together the Harry Styles and Olivia Wilde but if anything she and Jason you know hopefully will come together but I really do think it's really awful that um this woman's doing this and I don't I can't believe they didn't have her sign an NDA. Maybe she was their nanny so long ago they didn't think about it and then felt weird about asking her. Um, but I don't think she really re revealed that much. I mean, I think we knew that there was something going on. But I guess the secret is that we – that Jason was so blindsided, which makes sense. Like I've always said, it's so rare – that a, that a couple that breaks up are on the exact same level, like – either both heartbroken or both like, hey, we're good. You do you, boo. I do me. Like, it's it's always one person is way more hurt and then turns into, like, anger and piss and a little bit of vengefulness than the other one. And so I think that's what happened with them. So, yeah, here he is in the movie. So ugly. Okay. So let's talk about another ugly little shit. Um, let's talk about James Corden. <laughs> This story came out a couple days ago. So James Corden, I have heard rumblings about him being a dick a lot. And so to me, this isn't a shock. I think it's a shock to a lot of people because he's so delightful on his show and he s sings and he dances and 
he's married to a woman, but you would totally think he would be happier with a man, but he's married to a woman. And he sings and he dances, so he's just like a delightful, like, musical dude. He's jolly. He's a little chubby. He has an English accent. What is there not to love? You know, carpool karaoke. He sings with everybody from Justin Bieber to Mariah Carey. Anyway, I have heard that he can be a dick, like to staff to other people. I don't have any specific stories. It's just like sort of like, oh, why am I not surprised to hear this? Anyway, he went to the owner of Balthazar went on the owner's own Instagram or the restaurant's Instagram and revealed the story kind of out of nowhere. I honestly don't know why he told it. I don't know if he does this with a lot of his customers. I don't know what he's hoping to gain. I don't know if he was just like had a, a where something just hit him on that day and he's like, I'm freaking done with this. But he said that uh, James Corden came to the restaurant um, back in July and was not happy with his service because he ate a whole meal. And at the end of the meal, he found two hairs. I think that's pretty gross. Um, However, I recently served a meal to my son and he found a hair. And I was like, well, sorry, give me a shitty Yelp review. I can see how it can happen. And um, I'd be pretty grossed out by it. I think it, you know, but I have found a hair in my meal and I have not said anything at a restaurant and continued to eat it because I am terrified of someone saying I was awful somewhere. I mean, let me tell you something. I have never not put a shopping cart away. I don't care if it's fucking torrential rain because I know someone's watching me. I know there's a security camera at the Trader Joe's or something And someone's holding on to footage of me not returning a cart, just waiting to ruin my life, waiting for me to be a bigger star so that they can ruin my life. So I've also been a waitress, and I know it's really stressful. I know it's not a fun job. I also know it's really hard to keep uh, for a restaurant to even keep staff. And after COVID, I feel like we really can't complain. Like, we're just so lucky to, like, be eating in a restaurant at all. But I definitely think... If the hair is in your meal, you got to say something and be like, there's a, there was, okay, I know I ate the whole thing, but I did just find this hair. So pretty grossed out. And you, you know, what could we do? Well, he, before giving them a chance, which I think they would have absolutely took that off and probably something else. Um, because anytime I haven't been happy with something, the oh wait, the person's come back and been like, we also took off that meal and, and, you know, wanted to bring you a dessert or something. He goes, um, He starts like screaming at the waiter, according to the owner, saying, you know, you better give us a free round of drinks and something else. And so, of course, they're horrified. That's pretty gross. So then he comes back in October and he, um, his wife orders an egg oak omelet, just the yolk, no oak, just the yolk, an egg yolk omelet. I didn't even know this was a thing. Maybe it's kind of special because it sounds pretty like. A lot of calories. I mean, you heard of egg white, which is supposed to be better for you. You heard of just an egg omelet. I'm thinking you would need like a lot of yolks to make enough for like a full entree. So that sounds okay. But maybe it's super decadent and delicious. And like you get it with some cheese and she wanted it with a salad. And as she started to eat it, he noticed that there was a little bit of white in there. And he was furious, James. And he screamed at the waiter and he's like, there's yet, there's white um, in my wife's all yolk omelet, you better fix it now. So then it comes back and it comes with home fries instead of the salad. And then he's like, I might as well go in there with his English accent and make it myself and everything. Just really mean to the guy. And at that point, the meal ends and that is when this, the owner of the restaurant said, I have 86 James Corden from my restaurant. Well, the story goes out, I think on Monday, people are going crazy. However, I haven't done that much research, but I'm waiting for like the TikToks to trickle in of like their other awful stories, kind of like what happened with Ellen. Maybe there isn't. He, um, oh, he also in it threatened to like, leave a horrible Yelp review and like probably like, don't you know, I could fucking do a monologue on the hair I found at Balthazar on my show. I don't know what he said, 
But he has since, according to the owner, profusely apologized. And then the owner said, and you can come back whenever you want. I I would be pretty embarrassed to come back. I don't think he'll ever come back. Maybe he shared this to, like, get us talking about Balthazar again. But I don't think it's a great story because of the hair. Um, I don't think anyone cares about the egg white. I think no one would care if some egg white got into an all oak omelet. And I think most of us are pretty concerned about his wife's heart. Like I would like eating seven egg yolks in like one meal, whatever. Um, but the hair thing's like pretty embarrassing to say. But hey, there's human error. People have hair. Um. Anyway, I that's I have said this before. Someone could literally. Bring me a Chinese chicken salad with like human shit in it, and I would probably still like tip twenty percent because I'd be afraid of someone saying like you and your fucking. But what I I do try to order things the best I can, and the thing I do is you gotta ask for your salad finely chopped. Let me tell you, if you don't, it's so disappointing when you get like fucking almost like an entire like carrot. Or like pepper strings this long. And you're like sweating, cutting it up. So what I like to say is I always say, can you please finally finally chop it? Like eat, please really finally chop it. And just make that very clear. And it is annoying when it comes and it's still not finally chopped. And I'm like, oh God, if I ask again and someone's going to, you know, do a TikTok about me, what a bitch I am. But listen, everyone making a salad, if you just finally chop your salad... And if, I've talked about this before, and if you can get chicken from like a roasted chicken, your salad will be so much fucking better than a dry breast and something unchopped. That's my suggestion. Um, But those are the things I do ask for. And I always ask for a lemon wedge when I order fish. Like, can I have a couple of extra wedges of lemon? Anyway. Um, He's leaving the show, so who cares? Okay, this was weird. I saw this TikTok that someone sent me, and it's going viral. It's like over 250,000 views or likes so far, which probably means it has a million views. Um, but it's this song, and it's this girl. It's You see this blonde girl about with this cute guy and how much she loved him, and it's like words writing on it with a song. From the moment I saw, la, 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 who, and they're on vacation and you know they're they're like you know in a pool and then another time it's her at a restaurant like stop and looking really beautiful and I'm watching it and it's just I'm like did this girl get a new hairstyle oh she's a little more gland up here oh and this is her more natural it took me like four times to realize what this TikTok was about and that's what's so funny about it. It's all the comments. But basically, um, he was cheating on her with three other white women. I'm white, blonde women that all look the same. They all I have the photo right here. I mean, they look so familiar. I want to say this one on the end looks a little younger than the others. But they're probably all within 10 years of each other. They're all blonde. They're all blue-eyed. Um, they all like to drink because they got together and had lunch after and made this TikTok. And then I guess they all, but it, one, one thing I thought was interesting is like they, they, they would have had to have given their phone to their boyfriend and been like, can you just film me like I'm so beautiful at this restaurant? I mean, I'm going to do that with Peter next time we're out. I'm going to be like, just film me like you can't get enough of me. Like, stop it. Stop. I'm just trying to order, <laughs> you know? And so then, <laughs> and then if he cheats with like a bunch of other um, brunette comedian women, then I'll know I wasn't special. But, um. Anyway, it was pretty funny. But sometimes guys have a type. I always wonder that. Is it easier to find out that your guy cheated on a woman that is very similar to you, look-wise, age-wise, intelligent-wise, or or you don't want them to be similar? You want them to be, like, superior? Like, okay, well, I can't compete with a Victoria's Secret model, or I can't compete with, you know, this woman who's so wealthy and also is a fitness model and also, you know, is a trust fund person, or I can't compete with this girl who's 20 years younger than me and, you know, wants to bone every second. Like, 
that's what, or, you know, oh, I can't compete because he cheated on me with a guy. I always think, now I used to think that was the worst. That's the one I think is the easiest. It's just to be like, he's gay. This clearly wasn't me. Like, I can't compete with a dick. Like, please. Um, so I kind of wonder that. What What do you think? Tell me. What? I'm sure you're like, Heather, cheating sucks no matter what. But um, I don't know. Or like, what if the person is like, I mean, I had one friend and her husband um, cheated on her and uh, married the woman. My friend was so much prettier and more put together, like kind of just like an average, like, like, like frizzy hair, kind of like frumpy, like definitely not like glamish at all. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it shouldn't matter about looks, but just like the level of woman, what does it matter? But it's great if... You can all get together, be friends, laugh about it, compare notes, and do a viral TikTok. I wonder if, like, now the one girl that posted it, are the three others jealous? Like, well, shit. Yeah. Like, why do you get all the views? I could have posted it. It was my idea to go to the restaurant and put all the footage together just because you were more familiar with TikTok. Now you're like, no, now I don't want to be your friend anymore. Okay, let's talk about Meghan Markle. I just want to say, you guys... Um, I've been a little critical of Meghan Markle lately, but can I please remind you what a pro Meghan Markle person I was? Do you not remember that? I think the listeners of the show remember that. Um, I thought I had so much in common with her, being that we were both Catholic, went to Catholic all-girl high schools. We were both in on like kind of really average um, cable shows, and she married a prince. I, I, she had a weird sister. She, you know, that she was estranged from. That was trying to like be annoying during her wedding. I predicted what kind of dress she would wear. Um, that was my first prediction that came true with evidence, and I was all for it. And I was all like, "Oh my god, why do people don't like her when she's getting married?" Then with the Oprah interview, I I didn't really like the attitude and that you know boohoo. I we don't have security and. Uh, we had to, uh, what do you call it, surf, surf ride, couch ride, what, ca- couch, we had to couch surf. You know, I just didn't, enjoy, I just kind of thought that the Oprah Winfrey interview, I had mixed feelings. I was shocked too when she said, you know, the awful comments about what she endured and her mental health. And, but then when I looked more into it, I'm like, all right, that kind of makes sense if you're not going to stay in America, stay in um, England. And do your duties. Why should you have security follow you to other countries and all this other stuff? And so that part I kind of understood. And then it was boohoo. I don't have – we didn't have any money for a while. We had to um, couch surf at Tyler Hen- wait, Tyler Perry's mansion throughout Santa Barbara. Um, but now, obviously, they're doing fine. They're doing fine. It all worked out. Um, they got, I think, a hundred – million dollar deal from Netflix and then like another hundred million dollar from Spotify to create content. And I was a little bit like, I didn't know that um, Prince Henry was like, you know, a big creator of content. And um, I didn't know that he like knew, had a bunch of sitcom or movie ideas or anything that would constitute a hundred million dollars of stuff. So maybe if I lost a little bit of my love and worship for her. It's probably a little bit of jealousy because I don't live in Santa Barbara and I don't have a hundred million uh, Spotify deal, even though I've been doing this podcast for a little, really long time. And also when I saw this one speech that she did and it was so unoriginal and she uses a lot of the same words a lot. She's always like, we want to have people use their voices and their voices and it's a different voice. It's a voice we need to hear. It's voices. And she also uses the word archetype a lot in her podcast, apparently, but that is the name of the podcast. So I think that's cute to theme, stick to a theme. So she said here um, that she she doesn't love this docuseries that they did for Netflix, which is finally coming out in December. And I guess the rumor is that they allegedly want to take out um, – parts, anything that they say negatively about the monarchy and probably the queen or anything that they may have said about his dad or now the, who is now the king. Um, let's take that out. Well, listen, as someone who's 
interviewed people on this podcast and you're interviewing them and you're getting some juicy shit. So I'm I'm sympathizing with the the documentarian from Netflix. And you're like, this is good, this is deep, this is juicy, it's gonna get people talking. Oh my God, we've never heard this before, they've never said this before. And they sign a release and you're like, I'm fucking golden, I can't wait for people to hear this interview. And then they're like, wait, um, can my attorney listen to this interview? And you're like, oh, of course. Like, I don't want you to worry about it. But, you know, before I asked you the questions, you said, sure, ask me anything, you know. Okay, fine. And then, um, you know, then just like a couple hours before you have to submit the uh, podcast, then they say, oh, you need to cut out that whole anything regarding this person needs to be cut out. And you're like, okay, well, that's 43 minutes of the interview <laughs> we recorded yesterday. <laughs> and then you have to call your producer, Annie, and you have to be like, uh, find some fucking topics to talk about. So anyway, um, but I also sympathize with the person that's like, holy shit, what the fuck did I say? I don't want to get in trouble. And but so I don't know what this series will be like. And I wonder if people are really that interested to see them walk around the beautiful home in Santa Barbara. Um, I don't know if we're going to see the little cute redheaded kids. I am, I assume the chickens will play a role. I don't think the chickens had to sign NDAs. I think they're probably going to be exploited. They're rescue chickens, but you know, that'll be a juicy story. Like which chicken is like the biggest diva or whatever. And um, because I don't know if you know, she has chickens. Another thing that I related to her on. Um, But now and now she has the podcast where, you know, page six writes about every single episode she puts out like three times. So anyway, on her latest episode, she uh, Meghan Markle is talking. And I just listened to the small part of this. And it's about when she was um, a suitcase girl on Deal or No Deal. And I have to say she has a very calming voice. But it's she definitely is telling the story. She wrote it out. It's written like a book. It sounds like you're listening to an audio book, which isn't a negative. Everybody can do their podcast their own way. Listen, you sometimes say, Heather, you fucking suck. Get your facts straight. Well, at least Meghan Markle really has her facts straight. I mean, she really spent some time. <laughs> and it's, you know, and she's like, basically, this was it. I'll just say you don't have to listen to it. And she goes... When I first got this job to be a suitcase girl, mind you, on a hit show on Deal or No Deal, of course, I was thrilled. This meant that I had a regular paycheck, that I didn't have to constantly go out for auditions and running around. Um, I had health insurance. Like, she does this little, like, laugh, like, my God, that's how hard my life was. I didn't even have health insurance, and this show, you know, provided health insurance. And... As I walked around, as one would, as a model for a game show, I didn't realize that I would feel so objectified. And there was, of course, we're models. We have to look great, have our hair together. In fact, they even gave us a certificate to get spray tans, nails, hair, makeup, everything was on point. As I was walking out, the main woman who never could pronounce my name right. She just called me Mackle, <laughs> Megan Mackle. And she said, suck it in, Mackle. And that's when I realized I don't want to be objected or object- objectified anymore. I felt like a bimbo. Now let's talk about the word bimbo as a female archetype. So it's very much like that. And so Claudia Jordan, you may remember her. I believe she only did one season um, on. She, I think she was Miss. I think she was Miss America because Kenya was on Miss USA. I know they had like a conflict that they were each. She was definitely a pageant girl, Claudia Jordan. She came off well on Atlanta. She just didn't stay, but she was an actress model, and she has spoken up since this podcast came out because she too was one of the pretty girls to open the suitcase. And she's like, were we objectified? No, we weren't, but we were, we were models. Like we, we were to look pretty. And I don't think like suck it up is a bad thing to say. What if someone said, stand up straight? 
what suck it up like, suck it up like suck in your tummy right yeah. that's what she said like suck it up girls you're walking out we're gonna catch you from the side like what what if someone says hey you know throw your shoulders back get your posture together is when you're a you know a model on a game show I always, I watch, I used to watch um, Price is Right, and I was like, oh my God, that would be the greatest job ever to be one of those, the showcase models. And, but then I did think like, what do you do? Like, when do you just finally go, okay, I guess I should leave because the money's so steady. I think it's really hard. And anyway, she did quit. Megan did quit. Um, Probably for that reason of like, even though this is such a great easy gig, if I don't leave now, I could be stuck here. And then and then what happens when they cut you when you're too old, which would happen at um, The Price is Right. But there was, ooh, there was, that's some juicy scoop history. Price is Right. There was a whole sexual harassment thing with Bob Barker and this girl getting older. And, and then there's, of course, the girl that's been on it forever, the woman that's like in her 60s, the, that uh, co-hosts with Pat Sajak. What's Wheel of Fortune? Right, it's a wheel of fortune. She's been on it forever, and they're never going to let her go. And I think that's great. But still, like, imagine the standard of like being, you know, in your sixties and really having to stay stay the same um, dress size and all that stuff. I mean, that's a lot of discipline. Um, but anyway, I just think like <sighs> there there are jobs for people that are pretty, and there's jobs for people that have physical strength, and there's jobs for people that use their brains. And not everybody, you know, is the same. And, like, all your traits are the good. And I kind of feel like – now, I didn't listen to the whole podcast, so she might go around and say exactly what I'm saying. So I didn't say – but I do think, like – I don't know. I just think use what God gave you and – it does, if you are pretty and you're able to get a job like the girl I had on the show Tuesday and you're able to work at Hooters or you're able to use your sexuality to get ahead, as long as you're happy and you're using the talents that you were given, I don't think there's anything wrong with using your God-given looks. Just like, look, I'm never going to be an astronaut. You know, I knew that. I knew very young. I never said, oh, I want to go to the space. I knew at like six how much work that would be, how hard it would be, how how you have to be so quick and smart from a very young age to even think that you could be like a scientist or a doctor. So I was like, let me imitate my teacher instead. Maybe I'll have a podcast. I don't want to go to space, but maybe I can do some impressions and talk some shit and look, my dream came true. But I'm just saying everyone's talents are different and it shouldn't shouldn't shit on somebody that, you know, that wants to use that. The fact that they're pretty, like pretty people should still, you know, be able to utilize that and and get work for it. And I know there's pretty privilege and everything, but then also we're kind of in an era where that's sort of like they, they have to also prove the fact that they have more going on than just being pretty. And maybe that's what Megan was saying. I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. Bronwyn is getting divorced. Bronwyn from Real Housewives of OC. It has finally happened. Um, She has filed for divorce from her husband, Sean Burke, on Monday, according to court documents, by page six. Now, to remind you guys, I've talked a lot about her because I just don't think there's a better storyline than Bronwyn, even though she got fired after two seasons. She came to the OC from Miami. I believe that she was a huge fan of the show. This is something she always wanted. She'd been with her husband, Sean, for over 20 years, and they had seven children together. I think one set of twins in that. So a lot of pregnancies. She's attractive. In the show, she then reveals that um, she is... Well, first it started out that they were so horny for each other. They had a separate condo that they would go to to bone it. Now we know this condo was probably rented or borrowed or I don't even know. First storyline. So the cameras are there and it's like, oh, I'll leave work early that we never knew what he did for a living. And then they'd bone. Then it was, I'm actually bisexual and into girls. And then she like was making out with Tamara a lot. Then she comes back and she's like, I'm an alcoholic. And so we see, okay, now her journey is sobriety, which is noble and everything. And she says, the reason I had so many children is because those were the times in my life where I wouldn't drink. I was very conscious of having a healthy pregnancy. So every time I feel like I was drinking way too much, I'd be like, oh my God, I have to have a baby to force myself not to drink. 
So then, then she goes, I'm full blown gay. Like I am a lesbian through and through. I never want Sean's dick or any other dick, but we're going to stay married and we're going to do this nesting thing where I go live with my latest girlfriend in New York in her apartment and have um, orgasms like we counted up. It's about 150 minutes a day. So it was 10 orgasms a day that lasted 15 minutes each. Um, but she wasn't, she's not on any show or anything. So I guess she had time to do that. And then he would stay at home in the OC and watch all the, the kids. And I think like two are maybe teenagers or old enough to sort of handle themselves. But the rest, there's like four that are quite little. So then um, she's had like three or four girlfriends. She's on like her fourth or fifth now. She seems very happy with her. I met them both at um, the Bros premiere and she was like, oh, hi, you know, and the girlfriend's pretty. And she said the girlfriend is moving from Germany to be with her. And this whole time, I'm like, what is it that he that he doesn't want this? He doesn't like want to make it official and get divorced because I would think for him, it would be very hard for him to have a girlfriend where, oh, my my lesbian wife is coming back this week. Now she's gone. So I've got all five kids by myself. Well, now she's back here, but she's got her girlfriend here. So I have to leave the house. Anyway, I guess he finally said, fuck it. I'm out. Um, and I'm curious of what this situation is going to be because I think she doesn't really have a way of making money. However, they've been together really long and they have all these kids. So he's going to probably have to support her lifestyle. But hopefully, you know, her her new girlfriend who's moving here from Germany, um, they can do something together. I mean, I'm sure there's like a late in life lesbian reality show or maybe she and the lesbian can go on like marriage boot camp or something is marriage boot camp coming back because the other day i was very concerned for some reality stars that have no longer um on tv and it doesn't look like anything's around the corner and if marriage boot camp doesn't come back i think they need to someone needs to copycat it and make it something else because just like ultimate girls trip you get a bunch of these couples it doesn't matter. They could be happy or not. I mean, Spencer and Heidi are the happiest couple and they went on it for the money. So, you know, even if you're happy, act like you're not, get the job. So you got like Brittany and Jax. That would be juicy. Have some, some therapy sessions of like, why didn't you? Why didn't we go to Stassi's wedding? No, I don't have a friend, Jax. Go to hell. Like we could see moments like that. We could have Bronwyn and her new girlfriend, like newer relationships. We could have old married couples. We could have um, Monique, fr- formerly of Potomac, and now she's on uh, Carlos King's show, the DC show. She and her husband, they just said that they were getting divorced. It went everywhere. And now she's like, no, we're not. Speaking of that, we could have David Bador and Leslie Bador. They keep saying, we're getting divorced. We're not getting divorced. No, we. he, re- he took away the filing. Now that's, you know, Shannon Bador's ex. We could have them on there. I'm just, I'm just trying to get people work, you guys. I'm just trying to get um, the unemployment rate down. So anyway, I can't do it all. Teresa, who I met, and she was very nice. That one we really have to work on. That I really want to have a sit down with Teresa because I've not had that. She, um, she looked great. She got new teeth, and in person, she looks really good. She really does. Anyway, Louie and she got married. We will see their special. That's no surprise that that was coming, but they did announce it at BravoCon and she did not sign a prenup. You know, the thing about the prenup is I think she should have. I just think it makes everything easier. And I think especially when you have children, even if you don't have a lot, you really should, should have had a prenup. But other times people say it's better that I didn't have a prenup. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have gotten as much as I did. In the case of Erica Jane, remember, she's like, I don't have a prenup, baby. I'm married to Mr. Tom Girardi. He's going to take whatever he wants. So he didn't let her sign a prenup because, and people thought, ooh, Erica, you'll do so well in the divorce if you didn't sign a prenup. You can just take him for everything after 20 years. Well, we saw how that worked out. So, uh, but I definitely think when um, when you're two young people and, you know, one owns a condo and the other one owns a car. No, I don't think you need to get one. Okay. But anybody that's like coming in with a business or especially if you have children that you need to protect their inheritance and everything, 
then I think a prenup is the way to go. But anyway, so we'll see. Of course, lots of drama there. Uh, Jennifer, who threw the drink at um, Joe Gorga in the lobby of the hotel they were all staying at, she has done a statement, and and also her makeup artist, um, who was with her, I believe it was a makeup artist or assistant, also confirmed everything she said, that she was drinking water and that they yelled at her first. Teresa and Joe yelled at her first, saying, loser, and she lost her cool. Her husband was upstairs asleep and threw a drink at him. And one of the things she brought up is in the video how all the other men around, whether they were with Joe Gorger or not, were like kind of laughing and mocking, and she was a single girl by herself. But she wasn't totally by herself. She was with her makeup artist, her assistant. But still, I don't know. Listen, she. this is why the show is good. But, I mean, Joe and Melissa, I don't know what they're going to do um, with not being friends with Teresa. The, the season has been filmed. We're going to see it. But I don't know what the next season is going to entail if they're no longer – if they can't even be on a panel together at BravoCon. I don't know how we're going to film this show since they're both the stars of the show. Like, they're the, I think they're the three biggest stars of the show, Joe, Melissa, and – Teresa. So, okay. Oh, so I got a lot of heat yesterday because I didn't talk about how incredible Jenna Lyons is. Um, I wasn't aware that she's the greatest woman that's ever walked this earth. She is the new Real Housewives of New York. And I said, oh, she worked for J. Crew and she's some big executive and she was married to a man and has a child. Now she's married to a woman. Well, I got a scathing, scathing letter saying, you know, she's this big honcho at J. Crew, huge. And she's like, designer, and Michelle Obama knows who she is. I don't even know. Then someone sent me a video of her on Oprah from 15 years ago when she was still married to a man. And I'm like, God, I, I'm sorry. I hope she brings it, you know? And all these people that love her so much, if Bravo does her job right, chances are you're going to hate her in about two and a half seasons. So... We'll see, but this could be a very different show if this woman at, is is as incredible and as accomplished and such incredible moral character. I don't know if the show will be as fun as what we've seen with the OGs. We'll see. But our OG, uh, Ramona, went on Carlos's, Carlos King's podcast, and she answered some juicy scoop. First of all, she's pretty funny. And she was like, what? What are we going to call it? The leg- legacy we call the, the loser show? It's a loser show. Let's face it. You know what? You know what, Carlos? We got fired. You know, Annie didn't want us back. That's it. It's the end of an era. You know, it's not the same. We, no matter what, Real Housewives of New York is no longer us. It's these other girls, these young girls, you know? So it's like, what are we? And everyone's like, but where's the legacy show, which is supposed to have all the, the other girls? So, you know, like Ramona, Dorinda, uh, Sonia, Luann, but Luann, Sonia, and Ramona are the three that were in the last cast, along with Ebony, uh, Leanne, Leah. Leah, Ebony, Leah, and who was the other one? There were only five of them, right? Mm-hmm. So that so anyway, Andy, when asked about that, said it was the worst ratings that they the Real Houses of New York had ever experienced. So it's your fault that you didn't watch it, basically. Um, so we have to do something. We have to shake it up. But sure, legacy is coming. But there's been nobody's gotten a contract. Nobody says we're going to start filming then. So as I said before, we don't know that this is going to happen. But Ramona put up a great reel video of her just showing great clips with Blue, what is it, Green River, Blue River song playing. Is it Blue River or Green River? Anyway, you know that song, la da 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 da, and then they had um, Carrie, the voice of Carrie Bradshaw for Sex and City, Sarah Jessica Parker, kind of being like, "It was the end of an era," and I got so upset that I just started to cry. And we filmed it. I had to put it on there because I was like, "This is so sad," you know. Um, also, Ramona said what happened with Carlos. Said what happened with the. You and Ebony and not doing the reunion. For those of you that don't know, Ebony was a new cast member. She was an attorney. She's a beautiful black woman. And they 
had a lot of differences. They had really nothing in common. They had, you know, a 25-year age difference. But there were times where Ramona really seemed to try and Ebony was trying, but they definitely had a lot of weird moments together. And according to Ramona, Ebony, leading up to the reunion, went to HR and accused Ramona of being a racist. And Ramona said to Carlos in the interview, she goes, you know what? You could say I'm a lot of things. You could say I'm rude. You could say I'm dismissive. You could say I forget people's names. I mix up names. Okay. But racist, I'm not. Okay. It was really disturbing. And she goes on to say that she made up these lies about her that she has proven that are not true. But in doing that, they decided not to have a reunion at all. And so all the girls, it's my knowledge, my source, all the girls miss out on a very big paycheck. You, that's an extra paycheck for attending the reunion. And um, so, I mean, if you're like a senior girl, we're talking a huge chunk, like a lot. So, and then the, the filming never happened after that. And that was it. Now Ramona's 65. She's a realtor. I've said, let's get her uh, doing a, a real estate show. Let's see her doing something else. Maybe they just go on the ultimate girls trip. I don't know. But, um, you know, we'll see with that. Oh, I was asked. Um, I wasn't asked. This question happened while I was there, while I was at BravoCon. So let's see. Hey, hi, girls. Caitlin from Boston. Woo! What is your favorite piece of memorabilia in the clubhouse? And two, as a loyal, ju ju juicy scooper, when will you have Heather McDonald on the show? So that was to ask Andy, and he's like, "Oh yeah, sure. You know, she was she was on. I'll have to have her back." Well, I was on like at least ten or eleven years ago. I have never been asked since. However, of course, I'd love to go on. I'd love to go on with anybody. That would be very fun. But if I don't, it's also fine. At a great time, um, attending BravoCon, doing my show, doing my own thing, seeing all the girls. And I had a few questions that you guys asked that I will ask answer right now. What was the worst and the best part of it? I don't know that there was anything that bad for me except that um, I really would have liked to have gone and done all the fun photo opportunities that you've been seeing. I got to do that three years ago. And I felt like um, because I didn't have an artist pass, and believe me, I love anyone coming up to me, it was just going to be a hard thing for me to do um, and go around and like see all the booths. and Because the fans really love getting photos. That's their main thing. If you listen to anyone's review about it's about getting the photos. They're happy if they got a lot of great photos, and they're really pissed if they waited in line and didn't get their photos. So the photo thing is huge, which is why I love to have my meet and greets, because you're guaranteed meeting me and photo and all that. But So that was it. Okay. I need to know more scoop about Jen Shaw. Did you see her? I did not see Jen Shaw, but I did hear Saturday night about the whole her trying to crash it and how she was no longer um, was never asked to be part of anything, but she went up there anyway. And now I found out that she, I guess, was staying with Heather Gay. I don't know if she got her own hotel room or she crashed in Heather's Gay's room there, which is kind of funny. Um, I don't know if that's true. They, uh, this person asked, I didn't see you hanging out with Jill, meaning Jill Zarin, in the pics at least. What was up with that? Well, I'll post more photos. I guess we haven't even, like, I don't think I posted my one with Kathy. I met Kathy Hilton. Kathy Hilton, um, remember I said I went to a Christmas party? So I said, I really want to go to your Christmas party, Kathy. Again, you remember I went a long time ago, and I think you wanted me to perform. She goes, I did. And I go, okay, well, if I come back, can I, will you invite me? If, she's like, yeah, but you've got to perform. So I'm, I'm going to do a stand-up thing all that will be pleasing to her. So uh, we've got to put it, make a note, Can Annie, that that I'll do a conga line. Um, I'm friendly with Crystal, who's friendly with Kathy. I really want to go to this party, and I will do like a 15-minute stand-up set. Um, but Jill was there. Jill and Allie came backstage to my show, my live show, and they were great. And if you watch the streamer, they gave us these sweatshirts. that they she had, They'd made 12 sweatshirts of each girl from Ultimate Girls Trip with Jill. And um, they couldn't sell them because it was the other girls' names. And the girls were like, you can't sell them even for charity. So 
she told me that a long time ago. And I go, would you bring them to the show? And can I give them out to my Juicy Scoopers? Yes. But anyway, they're great sweatshirts. And she's got lots of fun sweatshirts that you can get, that you can buy. One being Team Jill, but lots of other Scary Island and all this fun stuff that and top, top quality of uh, the material, which I really love. So she was great. So they were backstage and they were in the audience with all of you guys. And I think a lot of people got a photo of them while they're in the audience. Um, I never ran into Andy. So that was a question. Do you have any interaction with Andy? No, I didn't, except for that question that that Boston Juicy Scooper asked. Um, who was the least pleasant person to you? Nobody. Everybody I met that either approached me or I approached them, they knew who I was and they could not have been more delightful. How tall is Teresa Judice? Um, I think she's probably wearing platforms, but like I said, she looked really good. I'm guessing she's probably about 5'4". Um, did Shannon address the David Bedore divorce drama? No, I talked to her about it at the USC game. And at that point, they were getting divorced. Since then, they... She, um, Leslie posted a photo that they were like in like Wyoming together with a baby and then took it down. So I, no one could keep track of it. No, I didn't ask her. Um, was anyone having a meltdown? Not that I witnessed. Who was being a diva? Nothing that I witnessed. Um, Who's a girl's girl? I mean, I think every, I mean, I think people were really excited to see each other. Lisa Rinna was very nice to me backstage. And she looked great. Crystal was really nice to me. Um, I saw the Million Dollar Listing people, Tracy and the two Joshes. Garcelle was nice. Oh, Garcelle was great. I went up to Garcelle it, 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 in her, like, meet and greet. I cut. I mean, I was like, can I see her? And they said, yeah. Um, and she did, you know, she looked stunning and she was killing it. Oh, Sutton was really fun. Sutton says she wants to come back on the show. Um, yeah, everybody was was just really great. Let's see. Um, and was anyone dismissive to me? No, not at all. Brandy was very happily buzzed, and uh, she was a good time. And um, she looked great. At one point, I thought she was wearing nothing under her dress, but she had a, a nude bodysuit. But I was, like, a little bit scared at one point because I thought – from looking at the stage, I was like, did I just see her vagina? But I didn't. And she looked really good and she was enjoying her time there. So you guys, I have just a quick, funny, little juicy interview with Josh Flagg. He's going to tell you all about his latest endeavor, his new show that's coming out, everything that's going on in his life. But remember, I still have tickets this weekend available if you're going to Vegas. The Venetian, it is uh, Justin Martindale, Chris Frangiola, Brandy, Julie, and me, all the hottest, juiciest topics just for you. It's a beautiful, intimate room. There's not a bad seat in the house. I'm very excited to go back to the Venetian. I've played this room before, though it's been a few years. Very excited. Of course, you still have like one or two days left to watch the streamer. Everything is at heathermcdonald.net, along with a few tickets left for Second Show Dallas, a few tickets left for Houston, and then Boston, Philly, and... DC, there are tickets still left for those, but not a lot. And that is with Chris Frangel. Everything is at heathermcdonald.net. And now for my friend Josh Flagg. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have a return favorite. TV star, realtor to the stars, an old soul in an adorable package. Welcome back, Josh Flagg. I'm so happy to be here. Josh, I'm excited to see you. I saw you with... The rest of Million Dollar Listing LA, along with Candy Spelling hiding in the back. Now, these are quick. This is not a great photo, but we were backstage. I got backstage through Lala or something, and everybody was there, and I was talking to as many people as I could. But, of course, I saw you, Tracy, your frenemy, Josh Altman, and then, of course, legendary Candy, who's like one of your really, really good friends. Yeah. Yes. I, you know I got to get her here. We'll get Candy in. I, tr I asked her, and you're going to work on it. I think she's a little apprehensive, so you have to let her know that I'm only going to ask her about what it was like to live in that home, meet Aaron, the the 80s excess. Oh, she'll the, totally tell you about the that. The best party she's through, the, the craziest thing that ever happened. Oh, she'll tell you all that stuff. Dynasty moments in her own home. Why, like, she was the first one to create the wrapping room. The very first 
So I want to hear it all. But so what was your overall feeling of this weekend? Were you exhausted? Was it fun? Thoughts? I'm exhausted because it was panel after panel after panel. We were, they were working on us like animals. It was like all day long, you know, walking from stage to stage, golf carts from here to there. I mean, it was inc- – I, I don't even know how many people were there. It was insane. 35,000 I heard. 35,000 people. It was exhausting. I mean, it was, it was, it was really cool though. It was, I think this was the biggest one they've ever done. Actually, it was they've, sure. they've only done two and the first one was 2019 and that was only 5,000 people. I went. I Did went you too. go to that one? Yeah. And it was just basically just in that one – theater where they did the Watch What Happens Live, that was the only place that you could see a panel. And then you had to go blocks away to go to the other fun stuff. No, this was, yeah. this is insane. I've never yeah. seen anything like it in my life. And what was your favorite, like, panel or moment? Um, I, it was funny. One of them, I came late because uh, there was traffic. And so I was on one of the panels and all the uh, the other cast people were on the panel, not cast people from my show, but from other shows. And so I just walked on stage and they all started cheering and everything. It was really funny. And then I sat down and said, sorry, I was stuck at the bar. And then yeah. everyone was laughing. But um, I couldn't really hear anybody in the audience for some reason. Like my Oh, heart, when they did questions, you mean? When they did questions, I couldn't hear anything. So people, I think people thought I was bored because I was just sitting there like – not doing much. I was just kind of looking like perplexed. And they all, one person came up and said, are you, were you stoned the whole time? And I said, no, I wish I was stoned. I just couldn't hear anything anyone was saying. So I was just sitting there. So um, that was pretty funny, actually. Yeah, actually, I mean, those are little things I think they'll figure out next time. But there were audio issues at those panels because Brad Gorgetsky was, he was hosting the um, Beverly Hills one. Right. And they all had mics, but then he just had the lavalier mic. Right. And he needed to have a mic too, because the the women on the panel couldn't hear his questions. Right. We could hear them, but they, so every time he'd be like, "Dorit, what did you da 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 da?" Then she'd be like, "What?" So all those things. That I think when they come back, they'll be able to figure out a little bit better. But um, so what was, of your panel? What was your most fun though? Uh, I like the um, I like the uh, I was one of them. I was having a, a mental breakdown backstage. I was crying about Why? something. Oh. Crying about something? You got to know what you're crying about. Yeah, just like ass- assistants that are quitting. So it's just really, really rough at the. So I was having a mental breakdown. And Tracy was like holding me. I was crying, and so I then we had to go on stage, and so I immediately had to wipe my tears, and I went on, but nobody could tell I was just crying. So it was really you're like an old stripper. It's yeah. showtime. It's showtime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I got on stage and was with uh, Heather Dubrow and Kyle Richards and um, – What was that? One of the game ones? It was – no, it wasn't one of the game ones. It was um, – what's her name? I like her so much. She used to be Andy's assistant. Um, she was hosting it. Oh, OK. What's her name? You know that really nice girl? Yeah. She, I, she, yeah. Um, I forgot her name, but she was good. Yeah, she's really good. And yeah. Josh and Tracy and myself. And that was fun. Yeah. And um, – but yeah, no, it was a, it was a lot of fun. Okay, so let's talk about this Netflix. Now, you just said you saw Kyle. You obviously probably have known Mauricio through real estate for many years. Yeah, of course. I think this is a good idea for a show. Um, I've heard a little bits about it. I had actually heard it's really good. And that it's a lot about, about it's a lot about um, like Mauricio and the two daughters that work for him. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. I don't know anything. I just. No, it hasn't come out yet. I know someone who saw the screener and told me that it is good. Got it. Because I was like, are we going to get sick of this? Of is these, Kyle in it? Of these, the, 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 she, my friend who saw it said, Kyle is in it very little, but Kyle should be in it more. Because what's really interesting is like going in their homes and seeing the dynamic between the sisters and all that kind of stuff. And they sh- they share a lot. So, because I was like, I said, are, am I going to am I going to be sick of like the slutty realtors and tiny outfits? I'm wearing a tiny realtor outfit for you today. Yes, I see. So just a um, blazer, tiny skirt, pumps, you know? Yeah. But is this formula going to get old because of the... Um, selling sunsets. Because of the selling sunsets. And your show is so different from these. My show I've is different, this. which is why it's been on for 15 yeah. years. Yeah, because I am I always... And I've said that because I've interviewed a lot of the other people. I'm like, what I like about Million Dollar Listing LA is that we... You know, Josh is so knowledgeable of these, like, you know historical homes or old homes and we get to see them and it's not all the same modern thing. Right. You know, and, um, and the fun that you guys have, who is on the cast? Cause they got rid of some people, right? <coughs> yeah. They got rid of Frederick. They got rid of, um, or they, I don't know what, maybe they resigned. I don't know what happened. The, yeah, the Brits are no longer on the show. The English friends. Yeah. Um, but it's now, the three banditos. It's it's me, it's Josh Altman, and it's Tracy. And it's so special because 
I don't think the show has ever captured before our friendship. The three of us are best friends, and we never captured that on the show because think about it. It's an hour show, 45 minutes with commercials divided by six cast members. You're left with segments of five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. You only can just focus on a house here, a house there. Now it focuses on our relationship together. It's like a family, and we're all really, really close, and we're all – it's it's just such a – it's like Three's Company. It's a totally different show now. Yeah. In the best of ways. It's oh, it's what we've always wanted, but we couldn't do it because there were so many cast members. That's cool. And so do we see more of like Tracy's dating life? Because she's still dating the hot guy. You, yeah. And her daughters, are, are they? do they get to be on it? Daughters are on. Okay. Everyone's on. Cool. I'm so happy for you guys. Thank you. Now, speaking of real estate, um, oh, wait. First, we have your picture of your boyfriend. Yeah. Very cute. He's a USC grad, too. Yes. Um, okay. Now, you have a book coming out. Yes, Let's talk about out. your book. What is – it's called The Deal. It's called The Deal. 51% for me, 49% for you. Oh, I love that. Yes. Okay, and? And it's – I mean there's so many real estate how-to books that are so stupid and they're just like, this is how you sell a house. Uh, you multiply the square footage times the size of the property and this. And it's like – it's a how-to. It's boring. It's like you fall asleep. I took every single deal I've ever done in my career, wrote them all down, and then took the best 100 – uh, stories and made a book full of examples, the good, the bad, and stories that you can learn how to negotiate my mistakes, things I learned to correct them, all the good things. And it's f- really, really funny. And, and it has it's, – so it's got a tremendous sense of humor. It's, a, it's, it's tons of tons of knowledge and it's actually really, really interesting. I'm, I really think that sounds great. Yeah, I, it's I'm really not happy your for you. Real estate book, and it's, yeah. it's about negotiating, and and it's not just for real estate. You could be negotiating anything, and this book applies. Give me, give me like one of the stories or one of the a simple thing that that people who are not in real estate should know when going to negotiate any kind of deal. I mean, a that's such tip. a broad question. I mean, well, broad. Just bring up one tip then. Uh, one tip. I mean, one tip. Okay, a tip that I always do is in terms of like. For instance, when I when I sell a house or I'm going on a listing appointment, I go in there and I always immediately recommend to the uh, seller that we do a, an inspection on the property ahead of time. Why do we do that? Because if I have an inspection report in hand and when the buyers come in and make their offer, I give it to them up front and say, make me an offer non-contingent or make me an offer based on what you think it's worth. And then there's no negotiating afterwards. So let, with, a lot of times you'll open up escrow. Then they'll say, oh, well, the roof needs work or the plumbing needs this. That We want a million dollars off the purchase price. And I'm like, well, if you have an inspection report ahead of time, you don't really have much leverage. How are you going to claim that, that why you deserve that money if you knew about it up front? So it takes the leverage away from them. So that's a really good tool that I use. And yeah, that is really that. great. Yeah. Saves because, you millions of dollars. <clears throat> yeah. Because that's also true when, when a house has um, has fallen out of escrow and then they put that – that inspection report, like there when you walk into the open house, I'm like, oh my god, I love that. Like, there's no secrets, exactly. you know, you know what it is. And okay, so now let's talk about the fact that people are starting to go. What is going on in the market? I saw you wrote a really good, great, long written explanation on your website. But is there a bubble burst? What? Like, what is going on right now as far as the market you know in L.A. today? Um, it's definitely softened. I was just looking yesterday at the report of all houses sold over $5 million in the last month. It's like a third of what it was. Um, it's. I think people are going to get acclimate to this new normal. Look, look, people are spoiled. They were printing money, okay? But keep in mind, before they were doing that, this is kind of what interest rates were. And people were buying houses. They weren't. They, it wasn't like the house, the market just shut off. So – it just went crazy when interest rates went so low. So guess what? Those times are over. You got to accumulate to the new normal. People did it during COVID. Remember, COVID hit and the whole market shut down. And then all of a sudden, people were like, okay, this is the new normal. And then the housing market spiked again. I'm not saying it's going to spike like COVID, but I'm also saying it's not going to be like 2008 where it just crashed. Like interest rates are still relatively low. They're not like what they used to be. Interest rates used to be at 9 10%, right? Okay, so we're at 5%, 6%. Okay, that's... Not awful. Yes, it is a huge difference from two to three percent, but that was just a strange moment in time, and you got lucky if you bought a house then. Right. Yeah. Like in my neighborhood, um, my neighbor just sold his house, and he sold his mother's house, which was next door, like five months ago, and he had sixteen offers on that house, and then he had one good offer on his, and it's sell, it's sold, it's so it went, and it's still sold in two weeks. 
but it wasn't 16 offers, which is still a great market. But exactly what you said, I think it was just an insane time. And so it's it's better for buyers, at least. They have a minute to, like, think and see stuff. Yeah. But also, if you don't act on it, you'll miss out. Yeah. I Look, the market's not going to shut off. People still need to sell their houses. People get divorced. People die. People get, get, go into disparity, the three Ds, you know? People uh, move away. They relocate. It's like – it's not like everything just shuts off. It's just not as quick and fun as it used to be. What about the people leaving California? Do you think they regret it? No, they're paying a far le- less taxes wherever they're going. But what if they – for the really rich people that can come back and like still spend some time here. But I'm saying for people that left California for good, I'm seeing a lot of things that people are not as happy now that they've left. Why would they be unhappy? They chose not to every, for a reason. But not every place in California because I think you realize it. I think you realize how great California is. Yeah. I mean I would never leave California. So it's hard for me to yeah. – to, yeah, I would I would be really – I would never want to leave. This is kind of cute. Kyle Richards, um, she had – see the label on the bottom of her shoe? A lot of people – wait, hold on. Sorry. A lot of people don't know that you have to check that when you do a TV show. Oh, that's, that's the funny. price. And, <laughs> Can um, you zoom in? <laughs> they people tried to zoom in, we couldn't find. But uh, normally, that means that she they're probably designer shoes, but that she did get like on the like a discount rack. Like even if it's like at Neiman's or something, they put the sticker on. But you really got to make sure, especially when you're like maybe that's doing just a the panel. normal price tag. No, they wouldn't have it like that. Why it not? doesn't matter. Who cares? And if you want to learn about all the juicy details, you can read the deal, and you can learn all of it. No, I'm really excited because you are a really good writer. I was reading your stuff on your website, too, about real estate and your thoughts. And you are funny and you have so many great stories about, you know, great people in the city and the history. And, like, you have such a a plethora of people around you. And so I think this is going to be really great for anybody that's a fan of the show. It's a really fun show. And it's about, like – Growing up here, living here, being a fourth generation Los Angelo, it's it's that's why every age can read this, and enjoy it because it gives so many references to things that have from the past, from the present, and and, and just it's it's just a, it's a really good book. Yeah, well, I, and is it available right now? It's available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, you know, you name it. Did you sell it at BravoCon? No, I didn't. Oh, I, I didn't. I forgot. I guess. <laughs> I know you should have because you could have had someone just in the booth selling it for you. I guess I should have done that. God, I wish you would have talked to me before. I didn't, well, you didn't tell me. But I did. It was on the Today Show. It was, we had a great little run there. So, All right. Good. And so how long has it been out? Uh, it came out on October 8th. Okay, it's good. Doing really, well, really well, listen, I, um, I guess you sent it to me. Somehow it's missing. I'm definitely going to read it. I'll send you another one. I'm excited for it. And I'm so happy for you. You look really cute. And... You know what I think is different about you is you don't wear your glasses. I got a laser eye surgery. When? A couple months ago. That's a big difference. I think you're cuter without glasses. You look lo- you look a lot more attractive without glasses. <laughs> because your new eyes? Yeah, now I can see you. Oh. Good. Were you scared at all to get the laser surgery? Some no, it's scared. a little weird when they do it to you. Like that machine is going down. You have that noise. It's kind of you're like, oh, fuck, this is really creepy. But it's fine. It's nothing. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm really happy for you. I'm excited for the show. Comes out in December. Million Dollar Listing in LA with uh, the December thruple. 8th. The thruple of you. Three's company. Your three's company. And Tracy thruple. Josh. And I um, love all you guys. So invite me to if you're going to have like a, a premiere party or a viewing party. Maybe we will. Do, that's actually a really good idea. Thank you. I thought of it. And Maybe I'd we like, will and, do that. Maybe we'll do that at the new house. I love that idea. I'm going to make a note. Make a note and put in that you better invite Heather because God forbid I don't remind you like two weeks before. And then I, I see an Instagram of you guys gonna, having a party without I'm gonna, me. I'm going to put ready. up a big screen on the tennis court. We're going to yeah. do a thing. I love that idea. You're welcome. Who else should we invite? Everybody. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm excited. All right. Thank you, honey. Everybody, Josh Flagg on Instagram, his website, if you need to real estate, obviously, but get the book, Change Your Life. Change Your Life. Yeah. Love you. Love you. <laughs>